fact, in my perspective, I think it's kind of ridiculous. Frank Baker knows Van Alstine. He knows the people who live here, the people who work here, the things that need to be done and haven't been done, and he has the qualifications. You have decided that he has the qualifications. More importantly, he is a good man who has a heart for our town. I can give you two good examples. Do you remember the bad ice storm we had recently, here a few years ago? Well, all the other senior centers couldn't manage to deliver their meals. And guess what? Frank Baker came to my house on the ice, picked me up, took me to work. Frank Baker and the police department delivered meals to every senior, made sure their smoke alarms were working, their heat was working, and they were okay. And they did that more than one day. That wasn't in the newspaper. But Sherman couldn't get anybody to do that. And I didn't even have to ask. So I think that that says a whole lot about Frank Baker. Um, one driveway took six drives to do that. No kidding. Uh, the fire department and police department have come and, uh, uh, to the senior center and they've talked to the folks about uh, safety manners in their home regarding fire. They've talked to them about EMT services and all kinds of good stuff. Frank doesn't have to do that. He never had to do that, but he did. I don't know the details. I don't need to know them. I only know one thing. We elected the city council to act on our behalf. And as a voting citizen who lives inside the city limits of Van Alstine, my behalf says, please don't repeat the same mistake over and over again. Don't belabor our budget foolishly by having to hire somebody else to go out and search for somebody when we already have somebody. We have a person who is right for the job. I would like to think that you would heartily welcome Frank Baker as the new city manager of Van Alstine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Next we have um, Cheryl Snyder. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Can you hear me all right? Okay. I also wrote down my comments. I'm Cheryl Snyder, Van Alstine homeowner, business owner, and current president of the Van Alstine Chamber of Commerce. So this is important to me. Van Alstine is a tough town, and I do not say that necessarily in a proud way. We have seen what happens when we have a city manager with possibly more experience come to Van Alstine. He didn't stay long. I know that I've only been here four years now, so I haven't seen all the many ones that have come and gone, but um, that is my experience. I don't know whether Frank Baker will reconsider his decision about becoming full-time city manager, but I would ask that Mayor and Council consider that you have someone with Frank Baker that is absolutely committed to this town. Mr. Baker and I haven't always seen eye to eye, but came to admire and respect, I came to admire and respect his capabilities during the planning and execution of Falderall. We could not have done it without him. There are many issues facing this town, and I believe that at this time in this city, we need someone we know and can trust. And also, he needs a city manager right now. Frank Baker is here now. Let's get to work. Thank you. Thank you. I know all of you own Shannon Morgan and I own Abbey Lane Home Decor and Gifts over on Marshall Street. Um, I've had my shop here now for going on um, seven years, six, six years this December 2nd actually, seven years. And um, I've been through one, two, uh, now I'm the third city manager mm -hmm. since I've had my business here. And I'm going to speak to Frank Baker because I personally worked with him on the Falderall Committee. And I have to say that in all the city managers we've had, no one has stepped up to the plate like you, Frank. No one has um, put the interest and the, and the blood, sweat, and tears into this town um, like he did in the planning of Falderall. We could not have done it without him. And I am in total agreement with what's already been said as far as we need a city manager now. He's done more for this town with less experience than some of the other, other city managers that have been here in the past. And we need someone now. He is here now. And I just urge the council and um, encourage Frank to reconsider their position. Um, 
for hiring the city manager. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stand up on behalf of Frank Baker also. I um, had personal dealings with him as city manager, and it has been outstanding. He's professional, he's strong, um, he stands up for what he believes in. I'm on the CDC board, the Chamber of Commerce board, and you keep an awesome, beautiful board, and also on the Fall and Roll Committee. He has come to nearly every meeting of every board that we've had, which is much more than I can say about the others. He has had good input. He has shown wisdom. He's had wise decisions. If something's come up that we did not know, he went and found out and got back to all of us immediately and let us know and took care of it. Um, I remember one day on Fall to Raw, just trying to make sure everything was going smoothly with all the people in town, and he and Chief uh, Barnes and myself walked around talk to the merchants, the restaurant owners, to make sure they knew exactly what was going on, that everybody was on the same page, that there weren't any ruffle feathers. I've seen him step out and go out of his way to soothe ruffle feathers when someone wasn't sure about what was going on or was feeling upset. Um, I've seen him be kind and gentle and very honoring to his staff and to the board members and other members of this community. And I've seen him also stand up when he thought something was right and, and do some very controversial hard, make, make some controversial or hard decisions um, when he didn't even have the position as city manager and he didn't do it based on is this going to help me get the job or not, but is this what's right for this city. I have a lot of respect for him in that. I know that you might feel that he doesn't have the experience that some other uh, people might have that we can hire, but I'm telling you, uh, saying what they've said too, this man knows the city, he's been here, he has longevity, he has relationships. That is worth everything. He knows the ins and outs, he knows the idiosyncrasies of what goes on in this town. If you need something, he knows where to get it and how to get it and who to go to. That's worth a lot. I can't even begin to think how hard it would be on the city to bring another person in again and try to start over. How unfair it would be to the city and how unfair it would be to them. I mean, they don't know what they're stepping into with all that's gone on. I really ask Frank to reconsider and I ask you as a council to really try to work this out. I think it would mean a lot to the city, um, to all the citizens, and, and forward growth. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Ms. Kanita Larkin. Uh, good evening. I'm Kanita Larkin, and I'm the admin assistant acting director for EDC and CDC. Um, you may not notice it, but I am much older than I look. It must be the Mary Kay I use. But I say that, I say that to tell you that I'm older, so I have lots of work experience. In my 15-year career as a legal assistant, I got to work with lots of attorneys. And I feel like I can recognize good work ethics and in that time that I was working with those attorneys, it was always fun to work with the ones that were fresh out of law school, and they were young, and, and well, some were always young, but they were excited about what they were going to do, and I always recognized the ones that were gonna go far. And I'd say, well, I'm gonna tell you now, I knew you when you were just an attorney. And sure enough, those that the ones that I felt were going to do a great job, they've gone on to be judges, they're district attorneys. So, I mean, I really feel that I can recognize someone that has good worth ethics and is a good person. I met Frank about a year ago as the Chamber Secretary. Uh, my job is to find volunteers to do Meals on Wheels. And sometimes that's not an easy job because not everybody wants to take the time to volunteer to do that. But on numerous occasions, Frank would offer to do it, he would do it, and like Sandy said, in addition to delivering those meals on wheels, he would visit with the elderly and check their fire alarms. So, I mean, I think that's pretty awesome. I most recently had the experience of working with Frank as the EDC, CDC acting director. And I'll have to tell you, a few months ago, when things happened 
and I was the only person left standing. I was frightened. I really was. I didn't know how the public was going to react towards me. I mean, I was really scared. So Frank, that morning, he was the first one to the office to, it just made me feel safe. I've also had the experience of working with him on developing the city. Uh, he and I worked together on a grant. I just can't think of any better person to be city manager than him. I mean, I know it's your decision, but um, when making your decision, I just think you need to think hard and take into account what everybody has said. Thank you. Mayor, council members, my name is Teddy Ann Salmon. I'm not here to speak for Frank tonight. I'm here to speak for Santa Claus. <laughs> So this will be a little change of pace. But what I'm here for tonight is I am in charge of the day that we have for Christmas, which is December the 8th. It's the day of the Christmas parade and many activities. And I have brought an agenda, and I would like to read it and make the council aware of what we will be doing on that day. So with your permission. Uh, it will start at 9.30. We have uh, reserved the community center through Jennifer, and we're going to have a restoration start at 9.30, and this is for a junior, Mr. and Miss Van Austin. And the qualifications for the contestants are that they must be between the ages of 5 and 12. Also, they must live in the Van Austin School District. Uh, they will be asked to introduce themselves, if, and if they want to show their talent, they can do it, but it is not required, and there is no limit on what their talent is going to be at five. Winners will receive a trophy and be a parade grand marshals along with the mayor in the Christmas parade to lead that on team. At 10 o'clock, the contest will start for the junior Mr. and Miss Fennell's team. Then at 12.30, registration starts for the Christmas Parade. Registration farms will be located at the entrance to the North Park located at Highway 5 North and Grace Trail. All participants must fill out a registration form and there will be cash prizes for first, second, and third. At 2 o'clock, the Christmas Parade will start. The route will be from the park to Highway 5 then down to Marshall Street and turn left, go to Maine, go around the block, on Jefferson, right on Preston, and it will end when it gets down to uh, Stevens Street, which is in front of the Department of Public Works. And uh, all, in, all participants are going to be encouraged to return to the Dorothy Fielder Park. And there we will have a recognition program. After the parade, everybody is invited to the Dorothy Fielder Park. In case you don't know, it's at the corner of Jefferson and Maine. There are some people who might be from out of town. There will be an award ceremony. There will be songs by the We School students, and that will be followed by the Christmas story and the mayor turning on the Christmas lights. And Santa will be available at the park to hear the wishes of the children. Your this year, we're going to have a real treat. Before and after the ceremony, we're going to hear some live music, and it is the best toe tapping and hand clapping singing you have ever heard. This will be sung by the, the name of the group is the Full Quiver. This group is made up of the, the Grub family. John, Sean, Melody, Faith, John, James, Abigail, and Joshua one family. Uh, they are a fantastic 
harmony group. They have sang at several of the opera places. They have tapes. Uh, I think everybody will enjoy them. And also that everyone is going to be encouraged to, and invited to walk around the square, shop, and visit with merchants and friends. And several of the merchants will have Christian specials and free refreshments. The roads will not be blocked until close, to, very close to time for the parade. And in that way, people can park in front of the businesses and it will encourage them to walk around town and enjoy what the air merchants have to show for them. At 6 to 8.30, the Boy Scouts will have a barbecue dinner and a silent auction. And this will be at the new Scout Hut next to the old Scout Hut at the North City Park. And we would like very much to see everyone attend. Uh, we would also like to see everyone that had a float. Even the city could have a float. But I, I don't believe in the history they have ever had one. But it's an idea you might think about. But thank you very much for your time and your attention. I do appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing everyone at the Christmas activities. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more? No, ma'am. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, we have no public hearings. We now will convene and we will recess into closed session in compliance with Section 551.01. City Government Code for the following. A section, I've got that. <laughs> Section 551.074, conduct interviews and deliberate the appointment of a public officer, specifically a city council member to replace a vacancy created by the resignation of A.C. Mosby. Um, actually, I have asked that we change the order of the agenda. We're going to change it to move to 9. In the closed session in time with section 551.001, Texas Government Code for the following A, section 551.074, to deliberate the hiring of a city manager, either interim or permanent. And everybody's welcome to stay. We're convening in the closed session at 655.
session item number six. And um, due to some recent legal counsel information that we've received, we are going to table this item um, to obtain further legal counsel as to the proper procedure in handling the, the um, seat that has been designed by AC Mosley that we have not yet accepted his recognition. So I appreciate those that have shown up that are interested in the position, but at this time we are not going to entertain that. I just want to thank all the people who came and spoke tonight and uh, expressed an interest in what we were, what was happening with the city of Van Alstine. Uh, we appreciate it. We like to have people come and speak to us and tell us what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. It's good for us to hear either way, and we just want to tell you we appreciate it. Thank y'all for coming. Uh, thank you for uh, speaking. Um, I appreciate everybody's input. Um, tell her what makes the community what it is. And I'm just going to say thank you. And I, I know there's some gentlemen back here that I don't recognize. Are y'all from? Where are y'all from? Yeah. Crazy. I'm from the college. Yes. Are y'all here for an assignment? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Interviews after. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, um, yeah, I want to thank y'all again, and I appreciate the positive comments. Um, we, as volunteers, very seldom get to hear nice things. We always get to hear the negative things, but it's really um, refreshing to hear some of the positive things that are going on in the community. And those that, that showed up that are interested in serving on the council, please don't be discouraged. I'm sure there's going to be an opportunity in the near future for you guys to step up. And we do have other opportunities as far as the EDC, CDC, Chamber, Keep Van Alstine Beautiful, Deliver Meals on Wheels, Help at the Senior Center, the library, friends of library, culture club, all kinds of opportunities for you to get involved. We really, really, really appreciate you showing up this evening. Got it? Motion to adjourn. We will adjourn at 8.05. Oh, a second. <laughs> oh, a second. All in favor, aye. All in favor. All in favor. Please. Get out of here.